I've got a lot of questions of people. They want they want to ask you, what's the most effective way to get clients? Like that's my number one question Okay, that so people, yeah, yeah, all yeah. my subscribers So okay, let's wanted to ask okay, me. so let's okay, so let's bifurcate this real quick, okay? So a lot of people it everyone wants to be Michael Jordan. I, I'm old someday to myself, but you know, everyone's like start there, but you Yeah. don't ever start there, You don't right? start there, yeah. So so let's bifurcate this. So like okay, to to those of you who are at zero, my advice is very actually quite simple. Turn off this YouTube thing and get out from behind your computer and walk out your front door. Sell local. If if you do this. You inherently, whether you understand it or not, you have an advantage. You understand so much inherently about the place you inhabit. And that, it, that understanding is, a, is the bridge of trust on which you will walk to your first client. Okay? And think about the people you're serving. Local businesses, where, where do they get their customers? Locally. Yeah, right. Where do you think a lot of their vendors are from? Yeah. That's right, local. In fact... Funny thing, I have talked to thousands of agencies and that is not an understatement. The people who, the only type of agency I have ever come across who fundamentally actually doesn't understand what the word means, but doesn't have any churn, local agencies. Almost to the letter, by the way. And by the way, do these local agencies, uh, like, do you think they like niche out or uh, specialize in a service? Hmm. No, it's just No, they don't actually. They do the thing that everyone tells you shouldn't work. They do everything for everyone. <laughs> yeah, but it's what they you. <laughs> crush it. And you know why? It's very simple. Their clients trust them. And why is that? It's because when things go wrong, and by the way, they always do, they just jump in their car and like, hold on, man, I'll be right back. I'll be, I'll, let me get a, I'm going to grab a box of donuts. I'll be right down there. We're going to work this out. And that one thing right there, Nothing can beat that. Nothing can beat no, that. nothing can beat that. So fundamentally, and here's, oh, let me have, tell you the exciting news. Let's say you call me tomorrow and you say, Sean, I, I followed your advice and I, I have sold to every small business I can in my area, I'm, but I'm very scared that is going to limit me from going and having a, a way to do world domination. Turns out, actually, that's not true because the second that you dominate your local area, you can move on from that. But I'll tell you what, what, what allows you to move on from that is money, <laughs> is recurring income, is a base, is a business, is a, a way to put food on the table and pay the bills. by selling to that local place, you can then go on and do bigger, better things. Because the next thing I'm gonna tell you to do is if you if you graduate from that, and by the way, we have this thing, like go to our help doc, search BNI or uh, uh, Chamber of Commerce or whatever. We have like Yeah. this whole strategy on how to go to the Chamber of Commerce and things. There's lots and lots of ways to do it. Another way I, you could do it is you could actually do like a local business podcast. And by the way, this takes work. So don't like, when you when you hear this idea and you think, oh my God, that's a lot of work. Guess what? It is a lot of work. And Exactly. by the way, we did, we did this ourselves. So I, I've, I've walked the walk. But go to any business owner and say, "Hey, I'm running this local. The I'm I'm running the you know Denver, Colorado business podcast, and we're interviewing local business owners about their businesses. And we wanted to talk to you because you're so amazing and you're so awesome. We can't wait to hear all your insights. And guess what? Just like this interview, just like me, everyone loves themselves and everyone wants to talk about themselves. You put them on, and then you use it as a Trojan horse to uh, get them to use your marketing services. Because every small business." wants more customers. And you just, guess what? Here's a hot, hot idea. Interview the people you want to sell to. So Exactly. lots There you of easy go. ways to do this. Yes, they take work. Yes, they take time. Oh, and by the way, you know when you're going to sell the least, be the worst and, and fail the most? Right at Yep. the beginning. Yeah. Right at the beginning. We're at the beginning. You are going to suck at everything at the beginning. And it is, it, but guess here's, here's the fun part. It gets better as you go. Every time you fail, First you episode will get is yeah. better. Your pitch will be better. Your delivery will be better. Your confidence, and this is actually the funny part, I think actually most of the time it's just confidence. Most people, you, you don't, if someone ever comes to you and, and, and you want to, and tries to sell something to you and, and you actually even need that service, like you need what it, or that product. If you are presented by, to, to by a person who kind of feels like me, they don't know, or maybe they haven't done it before, or maybe it might not work out, the hell you're buying from those people. Like you want to buy from the gal or the guy who's like, Psh, man, I do that all day long. I do that with my clo eyes closed. I can do that Exactly. in my sleep. That's who you want to buy from. That's what you want to buy That from. confidence comes from a lot of experience and a lot of delivery. But anyhow, so now once you dominate your local industry or your local area, excuse me, it's now one to many. So now the thing is, is whoever you want to sell to, don't try to sell to them. <laughs> Stop. Go find someone who already has. Go find someone who has an existing relationship with that group of people. And then Okay. go pay that person money. 
And then what I mean by this is, is you, you can't have a crappy product, okay? You can't do a bad job. And that's actually what's great about this. It actually makes you focus on your product and your service. Yep. But instead of trying to go and like, let's say we sell plumbers, okay? Just as an example, go find somebody on Facebook who has a group of a thousand plumbers. Do yep. not try to sell in their group. Go to the group owner and say, hey, listen, I have this amazing kick-ass product. In fact, I am so confident and I will pay you for your time to look at it and opinionate on it. Wow. Get an hour of their time, show them the product. If it helps their audience, they will love to put you up, especially when you tell them the great deal. You're going to cut them in on the deal. You're going to say, listen, you know this awesome product that you just told me you like? Mm. If, you, if you let me or help me small. or somehow enable me to sell into your group, this product that you yourself just told me is great, I'm going to pay you. And hopefully, if you're smart, you've created a recurring revenue business, which yep. high level can do. Um, and you're going to cut them in. And you know what? You you want to know what That's percentage is that? Just do what we do. Just copy us. 40% recurring for life. 40% for life, yep. yeah. And I'm telling you, man, align people's interests with your own. Um, and it, it, it's no more difficult than that. And what's great is it focuses you on the right incentives, which is you're not trying to out market, out sell, out offer, out pitch. What you're trying to do is you're trying to create a great product and keep it awesome and amazing and pay people and reward people for the relationships they've already built. And you just keep delivering good stuff. And if you do that, <laughs> let me tell you, you win, they win. Everybody yeah, wins. And it's funny because I've been watching your interviews and so it's, this is surreal for me to be on a call with you because I, I've always wanted to for the last three and a half years. And I, I remember you- You sooner, man. I, I talk to anybody. <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah. Uh, I didn't know I could get on a call with you like this. Um, so I remember you used to always say, go local, go local, go local. So- Still say it, yeah. Yeah, you still say it. So I used to, I tell my affiliates now, go local. And I can see on their face, it's not something want, they want to hear. They want to hear cold uh, DM. Just something yeah, behind right. the screen. Here's something... my cold email script. Yeah. That will... oh, yeah. In fact, by the way, by the way, I used to do this too. I am so guilty of it. I was looking for the secret sauce magic thing. I will tell you. So the, um, I'm trying to remember. I can't remember the name of the mail thing, but I used to be like on a like a, on a on an email list from this email tool, you know, whatever. And once I got this email that was like, "This is the highest converting email we've ever seen." You know what that email was? What was it? It was dear X Y Z person. We are running a uh, YouTube series or a blog series on great, amazing people like you. We'd love to interview you on our podcast. Would you be willing to get on our podcast? And what I love about it is I stole that idea, by the way, and that's how we did it. Um, <laughs> and it worked. But why did it work? It worked not because of the content of the email. It worked because of all the work that goes after it, right? It, it was a an email that required that you actually executed on what was a very difficult strategy, which is how do you have a hundred people on a YouTube channel? You got to interview a hundred freaking people. That's a lot of work. Yeah. But when you put in that work, it actually happens. And in fact, when we did it, by the way, we did it at scale. And I think our success rate was like 10%. One out of every 10 people would actually end up buying high level. But you know what we got out of it was a, what we, what, and you can do this too, is we got amazing content. We targeted really amazing marketers and agencies and stuff like that. So we were like, well, you know, worst case scenario, we got a kick-ass video from a really smart person on our YouTube channel. How is that a bad deal? Wait, so how, how would that work? So you'd email someone, a potential client, you're saying? Well, because yeah, we want to sell the agencies, right? And then, yeah. and, you know, within that, within that realm, right? Yeah. There's always going to be people that you want to talk to, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and you know, you'll get that you, interview. And, you, you spin and it and you're in nobody. Interview. So why yeah. are they going to talk to you? Yeah. Yeah. They're not going to talk to you because you're somebody because you're not. So you just email and you tell them how right they are because they, and they, most people love to talk about themselves. Don't you love true. to talk about yourself? Exactly. True, true. Exactly. So then, so, and then on that get call, them on YouTube channel and, on, you, and you ask them questions like you're doing to me. Okay. And then how would you, what would you do to when well, you're, I mean, when you're we wouldn't them? do anything. We were just, they, I mean, they would sort of like, like somehow at some point, they'd kind of be like, wait, who are you guys again? And what do you do? Yeah. And we would explain it. And, and then, you know, and because there, you've now created this connection, they would be opening to listen. And if on the off chance they were looking for or needed, and if you were doing it right, you were talking to people who needed your stuff. Mm, that's true. why you're interviewing them, right? And so fundamentally, you you know, it, we sort of took the track line that everybody we talked to needed what we were selling, whether they knew it yet or not. And they would either figure it out on that call or they'd figure it out down the road. Down the road, yeah. And that was about a one to 10 success rate. And you know what? 
that was kind of like us building our base. Like we needed a cheap, scalable solution. And it was scalable in the sense that, no, it wasn't some, you know, spray and pray strategy. Those things are crap anyways. We all know that. Those don't sure. work. But it, but it, but this worked scalably in the sense that it was consistent. And what I loved about it was the byproduct of the fail, the failure just meant great content because we didn't, you know, yeah, we didn't just, that's very, that's very true. You know, we didn't that talk to just true. dumb people. We talked to really smart people. Yeah, we that's wanted very to true. Our clients, they were big time people. We and they would come on and they would give great advice to people, and all of a sudden we had a great collection of really amazing smart people. We still do this to this day. We don't even think that these days we don't try to target them from a client perspective. Um, uh, because we, because we've done, we've moved on, yeah, but yeah. We, we don't care. And, and in fact, it, today we don't even care. We just want really smart, great people on the YouTube channel, because look again, if you're known as a place where you have the smartest people in marketing, talking about really awesome new techniques and stuff they're doing, guess what? You're going to attract a lot of attention and that's the kind of content you want. So, you know, it's funny because I like this strategy because how many all heard about is like, Oh, you should create content and you should blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It's like, but it's so damn hard when you do it, especially if there's not, because we're all looking for like this instant payback. What I like about this strategy is it's kind of twofold, right? Yeah. You get the content and you do actually end up getting customers in a very short period of time. I mean, interviewing 10 wow. people is not that hard.